Naringa Venkis is a former judge and member of the Lithuanian parliament. So why was she apprehended by federal marshals in Chicago and placed in federal prison where she is now awaiting extradition to Lithuania to face 39 different charges? According to a video posted by her son yesterday, it's because her family uncovered an elite pedophile ring within the Lithuanian government and that several people had already been murdered to cover it up. The story starts back in 2008 when Venkis' niece, according to her father, Dracius Kedis, told Kedis that her mother, Lema Stankunedi, was bringing men over to the house and molesting her. She identified the men as Judge Jonas Firmanasius, an aide to the parliament chairman named Andreas Usus, and a man known only as Adis. She also accused her mother's sister of participating in these pedophile orgies, saying that she forced her own daughter, who was around the age seven at the time, to participate. After the courts, the same courts where one of the accused sat on the bench, denied a protective order, Keddy set up a website documenting his daughter's accusations in a post called A Letter to Nobody, along with videos where his daughter detailed the pedophile orgies taking place in her mother's home. The old He spoke to national media and sent out over 200 DVDs to several politicians pleading for help. And even though his daughter was questioned by psychologists that determined that she hadn't made the story up, the case seemed to be going nowhere. On October 5th, 2009, one of the accused molesters, Judge Jonas Fermanasius, was run off the road and shot by a gunman driving a white van. Four hours later, the girl's aunt, who had also been accused of involvement, was also shot and killed. A pistol registered to Keddies was found near the scene. For obvious reasons, Keddies became the prime suspect and disappeared. The media report said that he had fled the country. The double murder of a woman and a high-profile judge in Lithuania is believed to have fled the country. However, in 2010, his body was found in Lithuania. The official autopsy report said that he had died of a mixture of alcohol poisoning and choking on his own vomit. His family suspected foul play due to the unexplained injuries he seemed to have suffered. The public in Lithuania was largely split. Some saw Keddy as a hero that dealt out vigilante justice to an unaccountable child molesting ruling class, while others, including most of the mainstream media sources, painted a picture of a lunatic that was lying in order to get custody of his daughter. His daughter, who was now staying with her aunt, Naringa Venkis, Keddy's sister. But the courts eventually ruled that she be returned to her mother, the same mother that had been accused of participating in these pedophile orgies. When the government officials came to take custody of Keddy's daughter, they were met by several protesters preventing them from entering Venkis's home. A month later in June, the other man named as one of the abusers, Andreas Usus, who was in fact charged with sexual molestation at the time, was also found dead. Authorities claimed he had fallen off his ATV and drowned in eight inches of water. A local doctor would later claim that Andrea Susis had visited her office to have a birthmark removed from his genitals. Despite all this, May 17, 2012, Lithuanian police stormed the home in which the little girl had been living with her aunt. 240 police officers in full riot gear broke into Naringa Venkis' home and took her niece by force, arresting 40 protesters who tried to prevent them from returning her to her accused mother. Protests swept the country and seemingly in response, the government forced Naringa Venkis, who was a judge at the time, to resign her judgeship. With the help of her supporters, she formed a new political party called the Way of Courage, a populist party that vowed to crack down on pedophilia in the government as well as government corruption. This new party actually won seven seats in 2012, and the media began to wonder if Venkis would run for president. However, after death threats and as her supporters described them, trumped up charges, she fled to the United States with her son in 2013. Which brings us to today, where she is now being held in a federal prison after being arrested by federal marshals at the request of the Lithuanian government. No one has seen her niece since the police stormed her home and took her by force. And her son is now playing with the American people. I know this is a complicated story. I had to spend the entire day translating Lithuanian news sites just to get the full picture. But what's not complicated is this reoccurring theme of pedophilia among the elite. We've seen it all across the EU, the UK, and the US, and in Canada. And as egregious as these crimes are, I honestly cannot think of anything worse. The ruling class is still never held to account.
And what I find interesting about this story is while it hasn't really made the mainstream media, it was allowed to remain on Reddit. It didn't get censored like pedogate stories involving American politicians. Because for whatever reason, the brainwashed drones in America will believe that things like this can never happen in America, but they can happen in far off places. If you tell someone that Putin has had journalists killed, they'll say of course he has. Putin is evil. What else would you expect? But if you tell them about Michael Hastings or the scores of other American journalists that have been murdered by the deep state, they cry conspiracy. That couldn't have happened here. Which is ironic considering these are the same people that will tell you that there is no such thing as American exceptionalism. And as for conspiracy, these same mindless drones are the same ones watching reality television shows like Survivor, where the first thing the contestants do is conspire and make secret pacts when all that's on the line is a million dollars, which is less than what it cost the American taxpayers when Obama spent the afternoon golfing. People need to wake up and face the evil around them before it consumes us all and stop living in a fantasy world where corruption can only happen in far off places and in television shows. The total eradication of the Puritan values that the first settlers brought with them to the shores of the New World is almost complete. For generations, the ruling class has attacked the moral code of Western civilization so that they could remake God in their image. And the people have been all too happy to help them construct the altar and provide the sacrifices they demand. And when that day comes, when even this bloody sacrament is given over freely without a fight, they will know that they have won. For Blackpilled, I'm Devin Stack. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Also like and share these videos. And if you'd like to help support making more of these videos, you can send cryptocurrency to the addresses below. You can also become a patron on patreon.com forward slash blackpilled. And I'm also working on getting a PayPal address for those of you that have requested that. And again, I really appreciate the support I've, I've received already. You help, you help make this happen.